Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Boys and children who are going to children's liturgy, please come to the front of the church. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of our salvation, let us begin by acknowledging our sinfulness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God, 
strength of those who hope in you. Graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may bear boughs and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what he has or she has done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Such a large crowd gathered around Jesus that he got into a boat and began to teach them using many parables. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow without his knowing how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up, and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As a Catholic, as a Christian, do you ever get the feeling, what's the use? Why bother? You know, do you ever just sort of feel like giving up? When we look around us day in and day out, it seems like the other side is winning one victory after another. You know, our newspapers, our social media, our televisions, our radios, everything are just full of what seems to be bad news, or at least bad news 
for a practicing Catholic. And the temptation becomes very, very real. Why don't I just give and enjoy them? I'm sick of fighting. Well, if you've ever felt that way, you may well have a bit of an understanding of how the prophet Ezekiel and the people who were around him to whom he's speaking in today's first reading were feeling. You see, the prophet Ezekiel was a priest of the temple in Jerusalem. To say he was unemployed would be an understatement, because by the time he's writing this, the temple has been destroyed, as has much of Jerusalem. Much of the population of Jerusalem and the kingdom of Judea had been put to the sword, and many others, including Ezekiel himself, had been drawn into captivity. And then from his exile, he starts the saying that the Lord God says, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set out, I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. And we can listen to that and think, oh, that's lovely. You know, the people are in exile and God's going to plant a tree on a hill somewhere. Great. Well, the people to whom Ezekiel was speaking would have known immediately that all of this is actually code for empire building. This sprig that, uh, that the God is going to take from the top of a lofty cedar, well, that refers to nothing more than breaking off a shoot from the sprout of David. He's going to take something from the, the, the tree that is the lineage of, of King David, and he is going to plant it on a lofty mountain, and it is going to bear fruit, and the birds of the air are going to come and make their nests. Birds of the air is that delusion to not only is this going to be an empire just for a select people, but people from all over are going to flock to it. And so one can imagine Ezekiel standing there in the midst of these people in exile and saying to them, the Lord God is going to establish the kingdom of David again. And not just for us, the people of Israel, but for all people. The Lord God is going to do this, not just in a little valley, but on a high and lofty mountain. And one can imagine all of the people gathered before Ezekiel rising as one and saying, you're nuts. We're in exile. Our city is destroyed. How are we even going to go back? How is this kingdom ever going to happen? But Ezekiel is doing something that most of the people at the time were unable to do. He was seeing through the eyes of faith. Now, some 600 years later, St. Paul would say to us, brothers and sisters, we are always confident. And why are we confident? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Now remember that Paul is a very highly trained Pharisee. He had studied under the great Rabbi Gamaliel, one of the greatest teachers that the Jewish people have ever known in all of their history. He knew the prophecies of Ezekiel and the other prophets backwards, forwards, and inside out. And because Paul was seeing through the eyes of faith and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he saw that the prophecy of Ezekiel had been fulfilled. Not so much in the exiles coming back to the Promised Land. Not so much in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Not so much even in Herod's reconstruction of the Temple. But he saw that God's promise had been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. In the very one in who in today's Gospel uses the same language as Ezekiel to describe the Kingdom of Heaven uses the language of this mustard seed that's planted and becomes a large, majestic tree, and the birds of the air come and make their nests in its branches. All of the peoples come flocking to this, this tree, this kingdom of God. Time and time again, throughout the history of the Church and the lives of the saints in particular, we see that happening over and over and over. What Ezekiel knew 
what Paul knew, what Jesus not only knew but is. They knew the faithfulness of God. They knew because they walked by faith, as ought we. Now, to walk by faith and not by sight does not mean that we are that we're just supposed to play dumb. It's not meant that we're supposed to ignore or pretend that the things around us aren't happening. But it is meant, walking by faith, that we see something greater than what lies before us. Walking by faith allows us to be people of hope. And my dear friends, we Christians are not allowed to be other than people of hope. We are people of hope because when we look through the eyes of faith, we are able to see God's faithfulness in each and every succeeding generation. We are able to see in the very life of Christ, the one who ushers in the kingdom of God, that while the world may look at a life of a, a, a carpenter and an itinerant preacher that ended in a dismal crucifixion, seemed like once again the evil one had, had conquered, we see the resurrection of Christ. We see the new life that he ushers into the world and continues to usher in time and time again. Like Ezekiel, like Paul, we too are called to walk by faith in the midst of darkness where we may not see the light, but we know it's there. We are called by, to walk by faith, to be that people of hope, a people who bring hope to a desperate world. The hope that God, who has been faithful in every age, will be faithful to his promises in ours. May God bless you all. Together now, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended yes. into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in again glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son, is glory of the Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ loves us and gave himself up for us so that we might be reconciled with God. Let us pray for our needs and the needs of all God's people. The response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church will live their love for God by seeking the good of all people and the unity of all Christians. We pray to the Lord. That all fathers worshiping here today may, by following the example of St. Joseph, grow in faith, hope, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, That God, in his goodness, will grant eternal rest to those killed in wars and violence around the world, especially in Ukraine and the Holy Land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, That Almighty God will guide and bless all who are working to ensure the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That all young people graduating from high school, college, or university may dedicate their lives to the gospel of Christ and be his presence wherever their life's journeys take them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That all those who are sick or suffering may unite their sufferings to those of the Savior for the good of all, and that they may know the Lord's healing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That all who have died, especially Jennifer Vasey, and any of our fathers who have gone before us, will live forever in the glory of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us seek the intercession of of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of the Church, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hell of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 625, God Created Earth and Heaven, 625.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the office presented here, provide for the twofold needs of, of, of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he, he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death and summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into, <clears throat> into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bartholomew, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, Matthew, here present, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command <clears throat> and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, <coughs> Our Lord, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us now share that peace of Christ with one another. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is found in the Red Celebrate and Song Hymnal 6.7, Our Blessing Cup 6.7.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements this morning. Reminder that the baby bottles for Michael House are due back this weekend. Uh, if you've forgotten yours and would still like to get it in, please drop it off at the back of the church or at the parish office sometime through the week. Thank you very much to all of those who helped to put together the Parish Gratitude Newsletter, which was in last week's bulletin. And a special thanks to Lori Vescio, who heads up the uh, effort for the newsletter. There will be a Mass at 9 o'clock in the morning next Saturday, June 22nd, for the Feast of Saints Thomas More and John Fisher. This Mass is offered for judges, lawyers, paralegals, and law students in our diocese. Also next Saturday, our Young Adults Group will be hosting an evening beginning with adoration here in the church at 6.30 uh, and a talk on Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, their patron. And the evening will continue with games and ice cream, hopefully down at uh, York Road Park. Uh, weather permitting, if it's nasty weather, it'll be downstairs here. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Celi Shrine burn in honor of Victor Elizan and Philip Sonny Dizan. Would all fathers please bow your heads. God is the author of all life, human and divine. May he bless you, the fathers of this parish. With your wives, you are the first teachers of your children in the ways of faith. May you be also the best of teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what you say and do in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And very happy Father's Day to all of you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is, the mass is ended. Let us now leave in the peace of Christ. Thank you. <clears throat>